Come in, church. Amen. It's an army rising. Amen. Praise God for the Lord. Young people, amen. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we can depart from the way, but God has a way of what has been instilled in us to bring us back to where we need to be. So I have no problems, no issues with our children being in the service. Yeah. Um, I know it's popular to have various things for them, but they need to know worship the sounds like and you can hear it and I grew up on these seats and under these seats and beside these seats and before there were pews I remember the folding chairs amen and I'm glad somebody brought me to church I'm glad my parents brought me drug me to the house of the Lord all 11 whatever I was pounds and, and then 24 pounds and then However much bigger I got, all of the badness, all, everything, the mischievousness in me, I, I'm glad they brought me to the house of the Lord. So are you thankful today, church? Amen. 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 There's power in the name of Jesus. That's such a great uh, intro into what our series has been. Jesus is greater Jesus is greater. Tell somebody that. Jesus is greater in today's sermon title, A New and Living Way. we got a little bit more time in the book of Hebrews. The Lord is speaking to us, and we're about to go into the hall of faith, as some will call it. And today in this sermon found in the 10th chapter of Hebrews and we're going to talk about a new and living way. Y'all pray with me for just a little while. And today our, we're continuing our unity month. And today's theme is simply unity and faithfulness. Yeah. Unity and faithfulness. This week I would just like for you to pray over, think about those of you who are here, those of you who will be here. How can I be more faithful to this local body, to this church? How can I be more faithful? There'll be something for you next week in which you can share that. I will not ask you to get up front and give a speech or, or talk, but just pray about it this week. How can I, including myself, be more faithful to this local church? In this text today, there's a great exhortation. We need exhorted most often. I found that to be true. We need exhorted in case you say, well, preacher, that's too much of a word for me. We need encouraged. Amen. Amen. We need encouraged as the body of Christ. Uh, in fact, it, it just it, sometimes we just need to be clear and frank in our exhortation. Amen. Amen. If you bow your heads with me, Lord, we thank you one more time for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for what our eyes have seen ears have heard and what our hearts have felt today. Now may your word find a lodging place in our hearts and that we be encouraged and strengthened Lord to walk on just a little bit longer. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 
Hebrews, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. And you, if you wouldn't mind, to stand to your feet and reverence to the word of God. God's word says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Amen. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Jesus was torn for us that we may enter into the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Verse 21 says, and having an high priest over the house of God, verse 22 says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. As you are sitting down, tell somebody out with the old, and in with the new. Now this is not a New Year's sermon for we are short sure enough in the middle of hot July. It's been hot. But we hear that phrase spoken often because someone is either switching jobs or they are in the middle of a change or there's been a change of time or maybe a change of position. Maybe it's even a change of your furniture. Uh, you've gotten rid of your old furniture and you brought some new furniture in. In this case, keep in mind that the writer here of Hebrews, the audience is a Hebrew audience, a Jewish audience that was still in many, many ways clinging or, or holding to the old covenant. They were holding to the sacrificial system that was had been in place for thousands of years. Yet Christ had come, he had suffered, bled, and died for the sins of many and for the whole world. And he had ushered in a new covenant. Out with old, in with the new. In fact, you hear it often in Luke, the 22nd chapter, Jesus says, this is my or this is the new covenant in my blood. If it wasn't enough for him just to announce it, somebody sure enough knows he signed it with his blood. Amen. Amen. So the letdown of the law that is, like we said in Bible study, is, is like a mirror. For you pass by the mirror maybe this morning on your way out and you might have noticed a piece of lint or or in my case, maybe a hair was out of place or, or I mean, down here or something like that. But let, but let me point this out to you. The mirror can only show you what's wrong. Amen. The mirror cannot fix your issue. So the law was a mirror that showed people when they had messed up when they had broken the law, but the law could not fix the folks. Only Jesus can get you right. Tell somebody he'll get you right. Oh, come on now. He'll, he'll get you right. He'll get you right. He, he can fix your problem. And let us not, let, let us not make a mistake here. The problem is and has always been sin. I don't care what the government says. I don't. I don't care what they legislate. I don't care how they fix it up. I don't care how people turn it around. The problem is not found in all these other issues. The problem is sin. Amen. You 
You cannot legislate morality. Amen. Amen. So that being said, full assurance, what are we to do as a church leading up to this 11th chapter that says we are supposed to live by faith? Well, I'll tell you, every single selection today, counting out what I'm getting ready or what I'm trying to preach here, there is power in the blood. Amen. We come this far by faith. There's power in the name of Jesus. When he comes, I shall be like him. What are we to do in the meantime while he's getting ready to come back? We are to live a life of faith. Now, the writer here is dealing with the Hebrew church, but the text speaks to us. There were Jews in this church that were considering after hearing about this new covenant they were considering turning back. They were considering turning around. I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but one time I was tromping through uh, some area over in Point Pleasant. You all, some of y'all know the story with my mother and with another older lady. Her name was Mrs. Beulah Johnson, and we had seen all these signs, all these signs. They were trying to find the family plantation, family land, all these signs said no trespassing. Beware of dog. And I remember as I kept telling them, um, I'm turning around. We we should turn around. We we need to turn around. They got dogs. It says stay off the property. They're climbing through fences and looking around. And, and, and they said, we've come too far to turn back now. I want to ask you something this morning. Anybody got to the point in their Christian walk where they can say that? I've come too far in the Lord. To turn back now. <laughs> I, I've seen too much. He's shown me too much. He, he's worked in my life too much. Amen. Don't start nothing in here. He, he's done too much for me to turn around and go a different way now. Christ is done. What has he done? The first few verses of the text. 1 through 17. 1 through 18. And we won't preach primarily on that today, but simply what he's done should influence what we are to do. What, what has Christ done uh, to open and complete this new covenant? Well, this is doctrinal. He, he came to earth and he was here bodily. That means Christ was not just a vapor, not just a spirit. He was fully, touch your hands, he was fully flesh and blood like us. Don't get that twisted. Christ is a man. He was flesh and there is flesh and blood just like us. Remember what he told Thomas. Reach your hand thither and touch my side. Put your hand and feel the hole in my hand. A spirit cannot do that. Christ's flesh and blood. He shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary. Christ also, the, the, the text says, fulfill the prophecies of the book. You all hear what the, what the text says prior to verse 19. He said, Lord, I come in the volume of the book. That means every single sentence has something to do directly or indirectly with Jesus. Every single moment from in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth all the way up to the end. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. All of that is about Christ, and he is fulfilling or has already fulfilled those prophecies. Amen. Just to name one, Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, check, a son is given, check, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, that's coming, and his name shall be called Wonderful. I just called him that this morning, amen. He is a counselor, somebody knows what I'm talking about. He's mighty, he's a mighty God, he's everlasting father, Psalms 90 says that, and most of all, he is the prince of peace. He sanctified us, he is sanctifying us, he is setting us aside for service, he made, he made us holy before God, and he is making us holy right now. That is progressive. Come on, Bible study, folks. There's a daily battle, daily, where I have to work and have to fight for what my flesh is working, trying to get me to do. The Holy Spirit is canceling that out. Amen? Amen. 
He mediates from the right hand of God. He's interceding for me even right now. And for you. He has made his enemies a footstool. Foot, footstool. We can a shout about that. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And here's the point. They already know they've lost. I think the point is, does the church know they've lost? Does the church know? Does the church act like? Does the church praise like? Death, hell, and the grave are already defeated. He is perfecting us. There's a lady that sang a song. I used to put that record on in the front room. Years ago, that album was put out in the 70s, and I didn't understand it then, but I sure enough understand it now. She simply said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Somebody knows he's perfecting you. You're not perfect, but the Lord is working on you. Come on, y'all. He, he's whittling some things off of you. And then he is conforming us to his word. That's what the text says. So much that Paul would write to the Roman church, I appeal to you, brothers, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. And that is your reasonable service. So if we're not careful, church, in light of what Christ has done, we can go back to the old way. And I'm not talking about coming and, 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 and bringing lambs and, and wolves and all of that into the sanctuary. But, but sometimes we try to bring our own sacrifice. We try to bring our own works and present them to God and say, now, God, because I've done this, I'm holy, I'm right, and simply just saying, Lord, because of what your son has done, he puts me in the right position. He's done the work. So we should show our gratitude by serving him. I'm not working to get saved. I'm already saved. The Lord did that for me a long time ago. But I'm working because I'm saved. Because I owe him everything. Amen. How about you? I owe him everything. Down to verse 17. Somebody will rejoice over this. It's good to know that your sins are remembered against you no more. Ain't it good to know Jesus? I don't know where it is, but the, the Bible speaks of there's the sea of forgetfulness. He throws our sins. He gets rid of them. He holds them against us no more. I don't know about you, but in my life, I have felt guilt so heavy for things I've said, things I've done. And every now and then, like an old cat or like an old dog, the enemy will try to dig that back up and reintroduce it into my life. But I want to let you know that there is a Savior that in his word has said, come on, y'all, there is therefore now, right now, right now, no condemnation. I'm not guilty. How about you? Look at verse 18, and it says, where there is forgiveness, there is no longer an offering for sin. God's forgiveness is powerful enough. He forgives us of sin based on his son. Amen. So in verse 19, God said, don't go thinking of the old way. You need to change out with the old, in with the new. And this change is a response to the people that, that sometimes were looking back and saying, well, maybe we had it better back there. Let me tell you again. He's spoken to the Hebrews, and I'm telling it to Pan Creek. There is no better way than Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The living God uses his word. He uses his word when we study it to make us aware of where we need to be. So to reiterate really quick, one more time, Jesus done for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Check. He is our great high priest. Check. He is our atoning sacrifice for sin. 
Yes. He is our substitutionary sacrifice for sin. Yes. And he is the only son and the only son of God and the only way to heaven. Amen. Yes. Therefore, look at the text. Therefore, check it out. That is where we are in verse 19. Therefore, a powerful work. That is saying, because of who he is, what the writer has built up through these first 10 chapters, because of who Jesus is, this is who we need to be. Now, there are some stern words in here for all of us. I, I try to be nice and say encouragement, but exhortation can be a little bit stiff. Amen. I believe, and I'm going to say this for about the third week or fourth week in a row. I believe sometimes, folks, we have made church into what it's not supposed to be. Amen. Amen. We can put our own stamp on it and how we think things need to be done. When in reality, the scripture tells us exactly what the house of God and what the people of God should look like. Amen. Amen. Today. Keep a note of this. People want promotion. And they want all of God's promises. But they want those things without the principles of God. Without God's word. I, Lord, I'll take your promises. Everything you said, I'll take it. And I'll take the promotion. But how many of you know that you can't profit from God's promises if you are not practicing his principles. Amen. You can't really profit from what he has said and what he has promised if you are not living by scripture. So here is what the Hebrew writer, he gives us four things, and this is in the text that we read. What are we to do as a result of what Christ has done? And you could call this the lettuce sermon if you want to. And he says, number one, verse 22, you read it? Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So the reciprocal of this is, the beautiful thing about this is, when we draw near to Christ, he draws near to us. Anybody glad about that? Draw near. That term literally means to ascend up to. To ascend up to. And I, I thought about that as I was studying. It says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? The answer is he who has clean hands and a pure heart. That's why it's in the text. It says, having our conscience but bathed and washed and being uh, clean with pure water. We, we've got to be washed by the water of God's word. You got to come and be bathed in the Word of God. So here's the deal: you should be taking a bath. Yeah. Somebody here is saying, well, "Well, I did. Yeah. Took a shower. <laughs> I took a shower. I, I, I washed off this morning." Hello, somebody. That's not what I'm talking about. Let me lean in a little bit closer to you. It's talking about being washed by the word of God. In case you didn't know, we have bath times on Wednesdays. You're getting bathed right now. Praise God. And the beautiful thing is, you can get a bath tomorrow. His word is water. To the filthy. Anybody in here a witness to that? I was dirty. I was, I was in this thing. I was, I was just all over the place. But then I read God's word. He began washing my heart. Amen. Who will ascend to the hill of the Lord? He has clean hands and a pure heart. The beauty is we have personal access to God through Christ. Help me, Holy Ghost. And we can now approach him without an elaborate system. He's approachable, y'all. 
you can come into his presence and with his word and be made clean. Yes. Amen. We went to D.C. once upon a time and, and I saw the White House from a distance, but I, I couldn't get close to the president. Amen. Jezreel and I went to the Hall of Fame and when we were there the night that Jerry Rice and Emmett Smith, among others, were enshrined to the Hall of Fame, but they had security all around and you could see it from a distance. I, I couldn't get close. I couldn't get up to Emmett and say, hey, thank you for helping us win those three Super Bowls back. They ain't even know who I am. I couldn't get close to him. The other day, I went down to the school, and because I forgot my key, I couldn't get in. So the place I work at, I could not get into the inner portion. But this morning, amen, hallelujah, to the Lamb, because I am washed by the blood of the Lamb. I talked to God this morning, and I, I went into his presence. I went in to the Holy of Holies, and he's the greatest one in the universe, and I have personal church. You cannot come any old way you want. What does the text say? Look at your text. It says you got to come with a true heart. you got to come not doubting. you got to come fully assured and believing in whom you're speaking to. you got to come with your heart cleansed and you've got to come with your mind made right. And, and a lot of people want to dress up the outside but God is not concerned about these filthy rags. He looks at your heart. Yes. You've got to come with your bodies cleansed and, and with your, your minds cleansed by the word of God. The second thing that is of note here after this invitation to all of us to draw near, to come near to the Lord. Then he says, while we're drawing near, let us hold fast. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. Lord, have mercy. What is the profession of your faith? I believe that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father. He is the only begotten Son of God. And He is my personal purchaser of my salvation. He is our atoning sacrifice. I believe there is salvation in no, no other. That is my profession of faith. I've got to stick with it. Yes. I've got to grow in faith. Anybody in here looking at your life, examining yourself this morning and saying you know what? I am not where I used to be. I've grown in the Lord. The Lord has grown me up. Amen. I've thought about this and I said Lord there is a great application here. We need moments when it becomes something for us more than just what we've read. I'm going to put a stake down right there. I'm talking to you, church, today. You need a moment in your life of faith when it becomes more than just words on a page. It becomes more than just something you heard somebody else say, but it becomes personal. I had to pray about some things in my life, and I began to look back at what the Lord and the moments where my faith grew a little bit. There, there was a little board there that used to go from our dining room into our kitchen. And there, as the kids were little guys, we would mark their, their ages and mark their heights as they had grown up. When we had work done, that board came up missing, but I still remember how it looked. It showed that at two years, there was a separation from four years. And at four years, six years, and, and so on, is there a, a moment that you look back in your life and see where your faith grew? You're not as short in your faith as you used to be. I can go to those moments. There's one in particular. It's kind, of, it's kind of small and it's kind of funny, but it makes perfect sense. Darrell, he was about to be born, and, and we knew he was coming in and, and our house. The old house had those screen windows. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It, it's hot. It would be hot in that house. I grew up in that house. And I'm telling you, I knew how hot it was. 
I'm talking about laying there at night sweating, and your sweat is sweating in the bed. <laughs> Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I can't imagine some of y'all that had more than one person in the bed with you. I was the only one in mine, and I was sweating. And so that house would be hot. And I remember just saying to the Lord and talking to Stephanie and saying, you know what, we need some central air. We've we got to do something. We have these little box units, but these high ceilings, it's not touching. And it's a big house. And so we began to pray and we looked out and, and, and found a guy to come and give us an estimate. And I looked at the guy and I looked at her and he went on off and gave us the, the, the write-up and everything. I said, we don't have this. There's no way. But what did we do, Stephanie? We prayed about it. Amen. And it just so happened that some relative in our family, on our father's side, uh, they said that, you know what? There's this relative that passed, and through the people in the lineage, they're going to be giving out some money. The guy gave us an estimate for $2,300. When the ladies, her estate was settled, amen, they sent a check out to the family members and it was something like $2,301. <laughs> reeled me in. He said to me, he said, don't you, don't you forget what I can do for you. Don't you forget what I can do, do, do to you and for you. My faith looks up to you, God. My Faith looks up to the old lamb of power. Somebody in here has this testimony. I'm not going to waver. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not. Third thing, look at it, verse 24. He says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love <laughs> and to good works. Wow. So let us draw near. Let us hold fast our profession of faith. But then it said, look at this. Let us consider one another yes. to strong words provoke unto love one another and provoke one another unto good works. Do y'all understand why you're here today? Yes. You're not here to see what I have on. Yes. You're not here to see who's here. Yes. You're not here just to, to and because it's a social uh, gathering. You're here first and foremost to worship the Savior. Yes. To worship God. And in your worshiping, there is testimonies. There is, there is prayer. There is singing. There is preaching. And we are here to worship God. But also, along the way, there are people who are looking at you. And you are looking at them. And you have received some encouragement. If there's anybody in here that has been helped by somebody else in this church, just wave your hand and say, I thank God for the encouragement. Say that person's name. I thank God for the encouragement that Cassie, amen. I thank God for the encouragement that Sharon, I, I thank God for the encouragement that Herman gave. Yeah. Yeah. Go to a bonfire before the big game. Does you no good to see pics of it? If you're not there, you can't feel it. You see, when I come to church, I come to be uplifted. I come to magnify the Lord and I come to be exhorted and encouraged me because let me be honest with you. Sometimes I come in here as the song says, almost level to the ground. Y'all ain't gonna pray with me, are you? Sometimes I've come in here almost down as low as I could get. But then a saint encouraged me. But then somebody fooled around and sang a song that, that helped me get through that moment. I heard somebody preach a word. Sometimes I've come in here feeling low, but when I left, I was uplifted. You're not here just for 
joy when I think about what he's done for me, but I also get joy when I think about what he's doing in your life. I don't miss things. I, I don't, I, and I ask God, help me not to miss these things. What the Lord is doing in the lives of the believers, it's good to report what God has done for you. And it's good to tell your pastor and tell others, here's what the Lord is doing for me. There's nothing wrong with a little text that says, here's what the Lord has done for me. That encourages me. I hope it encourages you. Look at that word. Let's deal with it for just a moment. Somebody might look at that word and think, well, that's a negative word. Provoke. I'm going to go to church today and I'm going to provoke somebody. Mm. That, that strong rendering of that word means to irritate. Or to incite. Now, once again, that seems negative, but, but no, not how the writer is, is showing it. He means... That word provoke means to agitate, to stir it up, to stimulate. I hear the Apostle Paul telling Timothy, Timothy, stir up the gift, to kindle it, amen, to stoke the flame, to, to allow the Holy Spirit to agitate us. I, I wish I had just one witness, amen. So well, why do we come here? What, what are we doing here? We come here to provoke one another. To continue on in this race, there should be some singing. There should be some praying. There should be some singing and some praying that agitates folks in a good way. In fact, I'm going to ask you like I asked the church several years ago. When's the last time you provoked somebody to love somebody better? When's the last time you provoked somebody to give their testimony and say, here's what the Lord has done? For me, when's the last time you provoked somebody in prayer? When's the last time you stoked somebody's fire? The flame had simmered down, but you agitated them in such a way that the Lord roused them up and gave them a greater understanding, greater faith, amen, greater desire to draw near. Agitate. A song in your hymn book, it says, you want to pass it on. The old saints had it better this way. They said that you can feel the love of God from heart to heart and breast to breast. That's, that's the key. We are here. We are gathered here. There was a time several years ago I was preaching. Amen. I was preaching to some papers on some pews. There were no people in the pews. And it was awful lonely sometimes not to hear some amens. My family had some amens. They were here with me. But I'm glad to be in the service. Come on, y'all. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time, I'm glad, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be. I get to be in the service. One more. While I'm here, I'm going to provoke you. Anybody in here know that you should have been cut off a long time ago? Why don't you stand up and give God some praise? Anybody in here, the Lord delivered you from a drug habit. Why don't you stand up and give God some praise? Anybody in here, the Lord has delivered you from an alcohol problem. Why don't you stand up and give God some praise? Anybody in here, the Lord delivered you from something that was so horrible in your life. Why don't you stand up and give somebody, give God some praise? Anybody in here, the Lord picked you up out of the miry clay. Set your feet on a rock to stay. He saved you from your dirty and filthy. You owe him a praise. You owe him a I shouldn't have to prompt you. You know where you are being. Let us. It's not there, but it's implied. Let us, verse 25, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. 
I was glad <laughs> when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I look forward to church. I look forward to feeling the presence of the Lord with others. So the writer said, I'm about finished. Let us not forsake the assembling together of ourselves. Now I'm glad for the media team in the church. Thank God for Sister Kiara this morning and Sister Sabrina. We thank God for them and they film things and help things to go live and help things to be posted. But let me tell you, there's nothing like being in the hub. I don't, I haven't played in a long time, Brother JT. I haven't played football in a long time. I haven't been under a helmet in a long time. But I still remember what it feels like to be in the huddle and, and feel your teammates up beside you, smell their sweat, feel their determination, hear them when they break that huddle, to go. You remember what it feels like? You remember what it feels like? It felt good. It wasn't just me out there by myself. When somebody else made a tackle, I jumped up. Whoa! That's over. A little brown pig skin. That's because somebody laid their hat on somebody. I'm talking about Jesus. And we got some folks that still just do this. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul cries out. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sit, sit. Thank you. I'm trying to finish. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. You see, we we've, we've got together, church. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. Don't forget to assemble. Yeah, Avengers, <laughs> assemble. Y'all watch that movie? It took forever to get them together. When they got together, they could do some things. We were apart for, for a while, months and weeks, but the Lord brought us back together. Does it not feel good to be in the service? But while you're here, what are you doing? Yeah. Scripture says in Acts 2, watch this. I shared this a few weeks ago. The early church. The Bible said they had all things in common. Mm. That means they shared things. That means, you know, maybe they shared, if I can put it in my own way, they shared a cup of sugar. Or sometimes it meant that, that they shared something that they had need of. Today it might be sharing your car or, or sharing and just lending your ear and listening to somebody. Let me tell you why you need to be at church. There is strength in the local assembly. I said I came in here sometimes low. Now that's the preacher. What about the people in the pews? Everybody don't come in here high and lifted up. Some days you barely make it. Some days you just hear it. But then you got here and because there were others who were praising the Lord around you, it began to agitate you. Yeah. Paul said we are fitly joined together. Peter said we are lively stones. We are living stones. Paul said we are fitly joined together. Let me diagnose this and if I'm wrong that's okay but I don't believe I'm wrong. The problem sometimes in the American church we want to be stones but we want to be rock stars first. Yeah. Out on our own, doing our own thing. The Bible says don't forget to come together. Yeah. While you're coming together you find out you have 
something in common with that stone over there. You, you find you have something in common, something you can pray for, for that stone back there. You make unlikely friendships with people and others. And I remember driving off of the park one evening. It was Wednesday. Bible study had been over and there were still about 20 people standing outside talking and laughing. And right then the Lord said, that's what it's supposed to be about. It's about relationships. It's about coming together in me. And then I begin to build each one of you up and you see your purpose and why you're here and what you're here for and who you can help. You drag each one along and whether you see it right away, the Lord has a way of making things clear and showing you why you need to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Can't promote folks when you're not here. Amen. I love looking picture at pictures of places. I can look a picture at a picture of a beach anytime. But look, can I tell you something? Nothing like being there. Amen. I'm done. Now watch this. God, as he brings us together, he's not looking for quantity. He had to work on me on that one. I kept looking over there. Every Sunday, some Sundays I walked off that side. So I didn't have to look. Lord, why do we have 108 on this Sunday and 68 the next Sunday? Where 40 folks go? That was me. The Lord said, that's not what I'm looking for, Christian. I'm not looking for quantity. Jesus had 12 members if you won't be technical. And one of them walked away, and the other one denied him, another one denied him, the rest ran off. Yeah. One was at the foot of the cross. Yeah. Can I tell you something? He said, I'm not looking for quantity. I'm looking for quality. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for folks that when they get cussed out, they get on their knees. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for folks that when they're having a good day, it's a bad day for the enemy, but here it is. When they're having a bad day, it's an even worse day for the enemy because those folks go straight to their knees. I'm looking for quality Christians. Quality Christians that when they come in to a place, when they go on their job, the atmosphere changes because of the Holy Spirit that's in their life. They pray for folks. They speak life into people. They witness them. I'm looking for quality Christians. Mm. So full of the Holy Spirit that in their neighborhood, amen, somebody said it this way, when the mosquitoes take a bite out of them, amen, they fly away saying there's power in the blood, amen. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I'm looking for those types of people that they have drawn near. They're provoking one another. They are in the presence of the Lord, even when they're not in church. Amen. So it's in you. It's going to come out. So he says, do it even more as you see the day approaching. He even told Paul, told the Thessalonians, comfort ye one another with these words. As we're coming down the straight the last stretch here, we should be comforting one another. As I see you every Sunday, I should be comforting you with these words. The Lord Jesus is coming back. That's comfort to me. Because if he wasn't, I don't know what I'd do. But I have something to look forward to. What about you? I have something to look forward to. There is a, a warning attached. Look at verse 31 very quickly. And, and the writer says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. And then he sets us up for chapter uh, 11. He says in verse 38, you must have faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. I, I'm here because of faith. I didn't see Jesus die, but I believe he did. I didn't hear him call on his father, but I believe he did. I wasn't there when he made uh, the earth and he spoke it into existence, but I believe he did. I wasn't there when he told Noah to build 
that ark and then the, the earth flooded, but the ark was buried up above the floodwaters. I, I didn't see that with my own two eyes, but I believe he did. I wasn't there when he spoke to Moses from the burning bush. And he said, who, Moses said, who do, who do I tell uh, the people that, that has sent me? He said, you tell them that I am that I am. I, I wasn't there. I didn't see that with my own two eyes. But I believe he did. I wasn't there when he helped a little shepherd boy slay a big old mean giant. I wasn't there when that happened. But I believe it happened because I read God's word that that stone lodged right in the middle of his forehead and the giant fell down dead. I wasn't there when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. I was not there when the Hebrew boys went down in the fiery furnace. But I believe there's a Savior that was there with them. By faith, I believe that he is Jeremiah's battle axe. I believe he is Ezekiel's wheel turning in the middle of a wheel. I believe that he is Peter's lifeguard. Amen. I believe that he is Paul's prisoner, par prisoner partner. I believe he's everything. And even though I was not there when all these things happened to the various ones in the Bible, I don't have their testimony. But I got my testimony. I got my faith. I know what the Lord has done for me. I know how he has delivered me. I know when I was faced down in a pool of my own tears that he'll send somebody by to see about you. But even greater than that testimony, I know what it's like. I was sinking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore, very things deep, deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me now, safe and I. I've got a testimony of my faith, what the Lord has done for me. I've come too far to turn back now. I've seen too much to turn back now. I believe he died on a Friday. I believe he was buried in a borrowed tumor. I believe that early on the third day, he rose with all power in his hands. I believe he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, declaring intercession for me. It is his power by which I preach. It is his power by which I live. It is his power that keeps me moving from day to day. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus is coming again. Comfort one another with these words. And out with the old. And in with the new. Jesus said, I go to make all things new. When he finished it, he showed enough finished it. And I'm thankful today that he has given me a place a seat at the table. How about you? How about you? How about you? Can you say I know him in the free pardon of my sins? I know him for myself. You'll find out in the next chapter he will give you the faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He will give you blessed assurance. You can know. You don't have to walk out of here today hoping you're saved. You can know you're saved. You don't have to walk out of here thinking, well, one of these days I think I'll be alright. You can know you're alright. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall shall be saved. You call upon him, place your trust in him, turn from your wicked ways and turn to God. Ask him to forgive you. He will save you. As you stand to your feet, the Lord has spoken.
out with the old and with the new. Yes. Maybe somebody here today is tired of your old life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. He will give you brand new life if you place your trust in him. Is there one? As we bow our heads, Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for speaking. We thank you, Lord, that you have done all things well according to your timing and according to your purpose. Now draw whoever you will have come. Draw them. It's an invitation. Let us draw near. Lord, draw near to them and draw them by your grace and by your mercy before it's everlasting too late. Maybe those who are watching, maybe even somebody that's here today, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, draw them. And we give you the glory and the honor that you so richly deserve. In Jesus' name, amen.